hey everybody, welcome to my webinar. My name is Gary Hughes. I'm a headshot photographer broadcasting live and in somewhat HD from the uh, sunny Orlando, Florida. If you are in the room, say hi and tell me where you're from. I'd love to know. We're going to have a great time today and learn some uh, pretty cool stuff about posing. So uh, Jim from Georgia says hi. Hello, Jim. Um, I talk to a lot of photographers, you know, as many of us do. And uh, one of the things that I think people struggle with most when it comes to headshots is posing. And although you think this is a very small portion of the body, its head and its shoulder, that it would be easier to pose, but it's not. And I see some critical mistakes. And so we are going to get down to it. And we are going to get into some really, really interesting stuff about posing. So what we've done is I put a lot of legwork into this. Me and uh, Daniel, the intern, we filmed, filmed a lot of segments with models to show you the principles and exactly hands-on with results. I am very, very big about connecting with my subject and making sure that I get a great expression because expression is the thing that sells the image. Expression is the reason that they buy it. Your clients don't necessarily see lighting the way that you do. They don't necessarily understand what the difference is between Rembrandt lighting and split lighting, and they don't know what a lighting ratio is. So you could be looking at an image thinking that's the greatest lighting in the world, but if they don't like the expression on their face, they will be uh, they will not like the picture. So uh, starting out with that, my number one tip is to get out from behind the camera. Check this very high quality video produced by myself and uh, Daniel the intern. Here's my posing tip number one. Get out from behind the camera. Clear and confident direction is the most important element when it comes to posing a subject, yet many of us choose to hide behind the camera and vocalize directions with our faces obscured and voices muffled by the camera. Even if you know a good pose when you see one, you might find it difficult to get your average person to get their body into it with a camera in your hand. My number one way to free myself up to direct is a tripod. This gives me free hands and a full range of motion to take control of the scene. The main advantage of a tripod is that you get to use your back button to pre-focus, then bring your face out from behind the camera to engage your subject. If you were looking to get a great smile or a real, genuine expression, the simplest way to do it is to make eye contact, smile, and talk to the person whose picture you're taking. I cannot understate how much easier it is to get a great smile from someone if you give them one first. Plenty of people feel restricted by a tripod, and I get it. You can't make small changes quite as quickly or have quite the free range of motion that you get freehanding it. For those people, I recommend a sturdy belt holster. You can holster the camera, do your directing, then pick up the camera and fire away. With nothing in my hands, it's easy to use a combination of practiced hand movements, my voice, and mirroring to get my subject exactly where I need them to go. I will act as a reflection of the subject when posing them so that at the same time as I am describing to them what I want them to do, I am performing the action along with them as if I am a reflection of them in a mirror. Combining that with small hand movements to make small adjustments to the head position, I can get a subject pretty much into any position I need for the photo. So posing tip number one, get out from behind the camera and use all the tools at your disposal for directing your subject. Use your body as a mirror. Use your voice to give specific direction and use your hands to make small calculated adjustments. Once your subject is in the right spot, hop behind the camera, frame up your shot, focus, and then coach your subject to the expression you want. Remember that you're the director, not just the camera operator. How was the back of my head? You like those shots? Those are great. I got a really close haircut recently, but we do what we can. How many of you guys are using a tripod? I want to know. Let me know. Um, I, I'm really interested in that. Who's a belt holster person? Who's a strap person? And who is a tripod person? I think that's important to know because I find it to be the most useful. At first, it feels like wearing a turtleneck if you've never worn one. Like it's a little like, get off me. Uh, but then once you get used to it, I don't feel like I could shoot without it. All right. So uh, Troy asks, so you're cropping everything in post as opposed to framing in the camera. Uh, that is a good question. And most of the time, if I'm, especially if I'm shooting corporate stuff, I will shoot with the whole head and both shoulders in the frame. 
so that I can crop it however I want later. If I'm shooting actors and models, I will very often crop it more artistically, but it all depends on what the job is. If it's shooting for a magazine or a website, I will give the designers who, we, who will get the final product as much room as possible. So I don't have one way of doing it. It all depends on who the job is for and what the end product is going to be. And now uh, Bjorg asks, will the subject not look slightly off when looking at you from behind the camera instead of into the lens? Absolutely. If you had like a million times magnifying microscope and you could get on an image that much, you might be able to see a difference if you put those two images side by side. But I do this all the time. Jump on my web page, go on my Instagram, and you tell me if anybody looks like they're not looking at the camera, and I'd be surprised if you could tell. And that's how I shoot pretty much everything. Um, not every frame I take is out with my face out from behind the camera, but I am especially, uh, if I'm shooting volume, multiple people back to back, and most of the shots I take, my face is not behind the camera, not only because I want to make eye contact, but I want them to hear me. And it only takes an extra voice command to tell the person, make sure, look at the lens instead of me, if they happen to be looking at it, you think there's a difference. But as long as you keep your face relatively close to the camera, I think you know, I'd be surprised if you could see a difference. Okay. How would, how would they say, do you find focusing on the eye trickier on a tripod? Um, and that is a good question. Um, I don't, as I look through the viewfinder and I put it right on their eyeball, once I pose them, then I pre-focus with the back button, then I move my face out from behind the camera and take the shot. Now, that being said, there are many, many cameras, including like the Canon EOS R that now can focus on the eye for you. So those, I'm really looking forward to that technology as it gets better and better and better. Cause the main thing focusing on the eye is very important, especially in a headshot when you're a lot of times dealing with a much more shallow depth of field. Um, than you are with something else. So um, I don't find it more difficult, but like anything else, it takes just a little bit of practice. I pick my focus point manually for pretty much every shot. And I have to put my eye into the viewfinder, find the eye, focus, and then move my head back out. Okay, we got lots of tripod people. Tripod or strap says Autumn. Uh, Elaine says tripod, less heavy too, save my back. Jeff says strap and tripod. He he has a, he straps his tripod onto his back. Okay, so we got lots of people doing both things. So that's very cool. All right, guys. So tip number two, and after tip number two, don't remember, don't forget to stay until the end because we are going to give you a free download of a headshot, uh, not a headshot. I'm sorry, professional portrait mini posing guide PDF that you'll be able to download for free. Tip number two. This is one of my big bugbears right here. Is camera height, and I think that because I don't know if it's because of the selfie generation now. We all do these selfies now. Nobody wants to look like they have a double chin. All these pictures are taken from up high. Camera height is very, very important. And I find people tend to go real, real high. And there's lots of different ways to do it. And you really have to consider that as you are picking your pose to make your shot. So watch this quick video produced by myself and the fabulous Daniel the Intern. And I'll see you in a minute. Posing tip number two, camera height. This next tip is one of my biggest issues with how photographers work with their subjects. You may not think of your camera height as having anything to do with the pose, but if you thought that, you'd be wrong. The height of the camera completely changes the angle in the perspective. Changes that can cause drastic effects on everything from the size of the head to the length of the arms and legs. It is almost the default setting for many photographers to shoot everyone from a extremely high angle. The perception is that you are making people look thinner and flattering them. And although that can be true, you also run the risk of foreshortening a subject's face, neck, and body, which can cause them to look short and squat and compress their height. When approaching headshots, I make sure to keep the final purpose of the image in mind when picking a camera angle. I will almost always shoot one of three ways. Eye level to the subject, slightly above eye level, and slightly below eye level, not more than six to eight inches down. By default, I usually begin at eye level. If I want to give someone power, strength, or an authoritative feel, I will go eye level or below. If I want someone to seem approachable, agreeable, friendly, or give them a more youthful look, I will take a slightly higher angle. Don't forget that you have control of the situation, even if the height of your subject presents a challenge. If the subject is much taller than you, you can control the height and get a great headshot using a bar stool or posing stool. Also, keep a sturdy step stool handy as you can make yourself or your subject taller if you need to. So before you pick a camera angle or climb up on a ladder for your next headshot, stop and ask yourself 
what the intention is. What do they do for a living? What are you trying to say about them with this photo? All right, that view of the back of my head was even better than in the first video. Uh, but get the point on that one. That Don't just default to that high angle because you think it thins somebody. You're going to change your perspective and force the shoulders into the back of the head, eliminate the neck. And uh, it's not always the way to make somebody look thinner. You can make somebody look thinner with a pose where you move their body out of the light, where you're using directional light and use the shadows to cover their body. There's creative posing. Sometimes you just put a big chair in front of them. I'm just kidding, not kidding. Uh, there are all kinds of ways to do it. Don't just default to that. Especially I photograph about 5,000 people a year and about 3,000 of those are professional women. And you don't want them to necessarily look like they're tiny. Sometimes you want to give somebody strength. And so don't just jump up on a ladder to take all your photos. So the number three thing, my tip is, uh, this is the one I hate. I call it the barber shop. You ever seen that in those headshots on those billboards where people are going, la, 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 leaning into you like that? Well, I'm going to talk about that and how you can avoid it in this short, incredibly highly produced video. Posing tip number three, the barber shop. If there is one thing I see over and over again in the work of headshot photographers, it's a lack of understanding of shoulder and head position. Mistakes in this area very often result in what I like to call the barbershop. Because of its strong resemblance to the pose that barbershop quartets affect when they pose for a photo. When your average person sits in front of the camera, there's usually a lot of work to do on the part of the photographer. In most cases, you're going to want a good posture with a natural looking pose. Unfortunately, how most people sit naturally is hardly flattering. Believe it or not, a great headshot pose starts with the feet. By default, I always begin by positioning my subject about 20 degrees off center from the camera with the foot closest to the camera pointed directly at me. Turning your subject bodily away from center can make it a little difficult to get the right angle on their face. So turning the close foot back toward the camera opens the body up just enough to get that flattering, slightly turned body position while still having a direct angle on the face. The next step is understanding where your subject puts their weight when they stand in front of the camera. You will find that in many cases, people will put the majority of their weight on their front foot and lean forward to the lens whether they're sitting or standing. This is how the barbershop happens. After I position my subject and turn their foot back to me, I will usually direct them by speaking and showing them at the same time to shift their weight to their back foot, shifting the bulk of their body away from the camera. You're almost there now. The last bit is to get the head and shoulders in the right position. In most cases, for professional headshots, I like to have the shoulders level in the camera view or to have the shoulder closest to the camera slightly higher than the other. This creates a little more power and assertiveness in the subject. With the weight on the back foot and the camera shoulder slightly up, you will be in what was once described to me as the boxer's pose, what I consider the gold standard of the professional headshot. Using my patented hand motions, I will direct my subject to tilt their head slightly to the shoulder further away from the camera and then turn their head back to the lens. You can also tilt the head slightly to the shoulder that is closer to the camera if you want to create a more approachable or sympathetic pose. I use this very often to photograph medical caregivers and other professions that need more of a I'm here to listen vibe. Keep in mind that every change in position has a psychological implication and that you as the director have control over those decisions. My most common tricks for getting subjects into the right position are the teapot, where you use your arms and body to direct the subject to tip one way or the other, and the head tilt and turn hand moves I use to position the head. So remember, try starting out from the bottom up. Pose the feet, shift their body weight to the back foot, and position the body and head of your subject in a way that speaks to the mood of the portrait while avoiding that barber shop at all costs. Don't forget, get out from behind the camera, pick the right camera height, no barber shopping, and you guys go out there and make some killer headshots and make some money. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you next time.